Are we good? Is there anyone in the chat? Are there any questions? Or, yeah, uh, so we'll we... go to Q&As. I don't know if we have anybody back. Any, anybody other than... I mean, hey, chat people. It's Q&A time. Ask us questions. I feel like we should have a Q&A song. It's, it's Q&A, Q&A time. Do, 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 do. Answering fun questions. We'll, we'll work start. on it. We'll work on it's that. Good start, right? Good start, yeah. Alphonse says, tried to leave. Airport told me I had to stay another day. Totally worth it. <laughs> I remember that. So, like, did you have to stay in the airport? I think he ended up. It was it was a complicated flying situation. Yeah. It certainly sounds like it. Yes. You know how to come better at repairing stuff. Huh? How does everybody like David's storytelling style? Um, I adore David's storytelling style. I David is amazing and one of the fav- my David's favorite stories. GMs. Yep. I really do it. I, uh, He's a superior. I like that it's, everyone has a voice. I like the pacing. And I love, the, yeah, the pacing is great. And I love. If I had to pick one thing, I love how he oh, is very good about splitting attention between everyone. That's exactly kind of what I meant by pacing: is that everyone. Yeah, he manages to. He's very be, good about. Uh, all right, so you're doing your own thing. Cool cliffhanger. Let's go to the rest of the party. It's, it's some nice. people can't handle the party all together, but David can handle three people split into three different groups, like with the same. Thank you very much. A plum. I mean, Let's keep making David embarrassed. Ask us um, more nice things about David. Alphonse, how is this different from Monty Cook's newer Numenera's core book in space? So I guess you're asking, how is this different than us just using the Numenera book and setting in space? Uh, Do I understand? I, I, I think so. Um, I think that. Uh, yeah, I think that 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 like uh, that that has more to do with the with the Numenera setting itself, and it's right. still a little bit more grounded in in uh, in, in fantasy. Right. Um, so I guess that would where be where the cipher system is is different because uh, that that space setting comes with all of the baggage that Numenera has with it. So not to say that Numenera. Is. Yeah, not to say the Numenera is a bad game, but it's, it's Numenera. It's, it's a great game. It's Numenera. And this isn't. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, this is something that's 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 different. In this is science fantasy. fiction. That's space fantasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Like it's the difference between Star Trek and Star Wars. Yes. So basically, that's a good way to put it. The hype. The that's hype. not a question, but yes, the hype. Yeah, the hype. <laughs> I agree. Do you have a question? Hi. Do you have a question? Op Blaziken. Uh, other than stating the hype, which I'm super pro. I'm also super pro hype. hype. The hype. I could also do P hype. P hype? P hype? P hype? Sorry, it's a, it's, <laughs> that's a, it's a Markiplier thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> they deem systems on the table. I mean, I'll, I'll answer this one first. Oh, we all know I this fucking one. love Legends of the Wulin. It is a very good, pretty crunchy, but still narrative oriented uh, martial arts fantasy system that I super strongly recommend. It's actually by the same, uh, it's published in the U.S by the same people who publish fucking Nobilis, uh, Aosama, and it's really super fucking good. It, the, the, there's about as much confusion the first time you read the book. But that's more because of translation. It's not as bad. It's not in that time. So what's your favorite game slash system? Um, torn. Um, I think I'm going to have to go with forward. Ryutama, though. Oh, uh, yeah. Ryutama's I, I adore Ryutama. Ryutama's it's simple. Adorable. It's... It's heartwarming and terrifying at the same time, and it. Most games take a lot of energy to run. Ryutama runs itself. It's amazing. Ryutama is an awesome game. I like well, it a lot. Mine's easy. The uh, Fantasy Flight Star Wars game because yeah. it's literally just like, was did it work in the movies? Was it cool in the movies? It works in this game. All right, let's do it. <laughs> and you can like equate it like every Star Wars thing that ever come out can just be like done in that game, and it's so good for that setting. Yeah, I agree with that wholeheartedly. <laughs> I always feel like <laughs> I know both the coffee table. What's yours, Felix? I always feel like I'm super cliche because I was I was always a Lord of Darkness um, junkie. Which uh, which splat? Or just mortals? That's that's to me is the I, more important. I think Changeling is my favorite. Oh my god, I wish you could have got that on camera. Slid across <laughs> when World of Darkness was mentioned. I heard something rattle across the house and Shay did that. <laughs> Shay really likes World of Darkness. World of Darkness is really good. Shay, Especially Changeling. Changeling is my favorite setting too. Especially Changeling the Lost, I assume, and not Dreaming? Yeah. Yeah. And then I also. Just really, really like vampire. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm actually at. I have. It's a toss up between Masquerade and Requiem because each one has their own things. Mm-hmm. 
Like, there's some really, really cool mechanics they introduced in, in Requiem. Um, but, like, the old system, like, the old world, I, I also just like because... Yeah, this is just good. Just world Arts is bad. What's your favorite? And after that, we have an off-topic question from OP Plays again. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> my, uh... My favorite game system is uh, Unknown Armies because I've uh, I love Unknown Armies. Fuck yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah, Unknown yeah. Armies is a pretty great game. It's pretty great. You guys, uh, you guys should check it out. Uh, the off-topic question is: What are you guys' favorite Pokemon? Aww. What? That's easy. <coughs> what? That's easy. Uh, My yeah. favorite Pokemon is Aegislash. He's a sword, <laughs> but also a shield. Oh yeah. If not Aegis, Aegis, if it's, if it's not Aegislash, then it's Chansey. It's. All right, those are, those are pretty good. Um, my favorite Pokemon, so I've actually only played the original Red and Blue, um, which is, I might get kicked out of this table. <laughs> um, but I played the shit out of it when I was younger. Um, it was like one of the only Game Boy games I had. My favorite is Rapidash. Rapidash? It is pretty cute. I like I like horses and also things that are on fire, so it's basically perfect. Horses, fire, everything you ever want. And you can't do that in real life. No. A, a close second is Ninetales. That's a good one. Oh, it's Blastoise. I fucking love Blastoise. Blastoise is a fucking oh, badass motherfucker. Also, hilarious story. I got so mad when I watched that stupid fucking Pokemon movie. Where Which the, one? The first one where the chick has a Blastoise that can do like lightning moves, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? What is that? <laughs> what is that, boy? What is this fucking travesty? <laughs> How do I get that? <laughs> you don't. They're, well, all of like the cartoons in the movies are ridiculous because they bend all the rules in every single one of them. So so like, oh, yeah, you, you know that, that whole thing in the games and stuff that you played where you had to do this? Well, fuck that. I want to win. <laughs> Which is fine with me. I mean, what's, uh, do, what's your do whatever. Uh, I actually, I still have my Pokemon Blue. Really? And my Game Boy, yeah. That's mine awesome. is, mine is, um, mine was in the trunk <laughs> of an ex's, uh, uh, let's see here, how do I, how do I, how, let's see here. It, okay, my Pokemon, actually my brother's Game Boy Color, because I lost, mine broke and I stole his. My, sorry, Jonathan. My brother's Game Boy Color with my only copy of Pokemon Blue, it was lost in the trunk of my ex's, um, I, I dated them later, at the time, girlfriend, <laughs> Um, so that's like three degrees of separation that I will never ever see again. That 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 is lost. Oh, it's gone forever. That's awful. It's never coming back. She was probably super psyched. <laughs> she she got a free Game Boy Color and Pokemon Blue. When, dude, when, dude, when, full when the Game Boy file. Color when the Game Boy Color came out, I begged and pleaded and like just like my my grandparents were really easy to like win over on things, <laughs> and I just begged and pleaded and like all I wanted was the Game Boy Color. Like my brother always got all the game consoles and never let me play them, and I was just like I ended up having to buy his Super Nintendo in order for him to let me play it. All right, what's your favorite Pokemon? We have another question. Oh, well, uh, you, you didn't say what my favorite one is yet. Oh, go oh, ahead. Being nostalgic. Um, mm. my all-time favorite is Vaporeon. Hell yeah. However. I will take almost any EV evolution. Um, my favorite of the new ones is uh, Espeon and Sylveon. Actually, within the community, these are commonly referred to as EV evolutions. Oh no, Dylan's dead. I don't have a favorite. Pokemon. He deserved it. All right. Oh. So the next question <laughs> from Alicons is: Archetypes people at the table, David included, gravitate to in gaming, and why? Uh, and then the last question: Why is Shay bitching out of play? Let's <laughs> 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 we'll start with archetypes then. Uh, we can actually answer the Shay bitching out of playing real briefly. He's got a goddamn job. Oh. He's got a goddamn job. And a child. And a child. <laughs> Shay's awesome. Oh man, so somebody else want to take the archetypes one first? Did they have we'll a start with David? Answer? Yeah, David. Oh uh, man, I like to play the dumb hitty guy. Yeah? Yeah, I'd like to play the dumb hitty guy that hits, that hits really hard, that's that's nice, or the most evil cunning guy that pretends yeah. to be that's nice all right. and, th- <laughs> and stabs you in the back. No that's, excuses. That's, yeah. those, are, those are the two I like to play. David played the hitty guy, he played the real. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I love I love hitty guys, and uh, I don't know. I, it depends. I always play the hitty guy first, though, if I don't know a system. It's a good starting point. It's, it's, like, it's, yeah, a good starting it's just it's good, it's good to just get that visceral like like feeling. And then if I know a system, I'll play the the other guy because I feel like I can trust the system to allow me to play the character right. like that I would like to play like that. So, and the yeah. English accented incompetent wizards, David. Yeah, I like Alphonse. I like that, oh, those yeah. two. All right, Felix, what's your favorite? <laughs> what what archetypes are you gravitated to? Um, 
the hitty people because like I'll try not to, and then I just become the hitty person. Like it just happens. Um, playing social characters is actually really hard for me. Uh, I couldn't I'm having tell. quite a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, cool. That's good. Uh, but uh, I do like hitty characters. I also like. I really like whenever I'm able to play like creepy characters. I like creepy. Like Nas are my favorite thing Nos in the entire world. <laughs> thank you for the follow, O.P. Blaziken. Yes, thank you very much. Um, it's a tie between two. The first one is the Paladin. I love playing the the, the, the heroic good guy who's just incredibly altruistic and just a good guy. Um, or the mercenary, but is a mercenary for like I have a family. I'm sorry, I'm doing this because I I got I actually have like actual responsibilities. I'm not just like an evil money grubber. I'm just a guy. And I gotta get I gotta get the food and go go home. So that that means clubbing you over the head? Sorry, clubbing you over the head. <laughs> um, I gravitate towards um the weird science characters is kind of this whole thing. Um, but I like I'm I was thinking when we had asked the question, like, what do you okay, what do you play? I've, okay, I've played um a weird mechanomancer. I've played um an alien uh um energy technician. I played. Uh, I'm gonna count warlocks as weird science in D and D. I'm gonna count it. Yeah, it works. Um, but yeah, like snarky and button pushing is the thing I like. Uh, on the other side of that, if I can't do that, I like playing like the put together calm like um, mm-hmm. organizer slash gal Friday kind of character. I like that also. Like fuck it, I guess I've got to do this thing for these guys again. God damn it! <laughs> gotta go save their asses. I like playing brains. Yeah. Callahan's a super not my standard at all, uh, but I like playing characters that are very canny uh, and very intelligent. Um, Often charismatic, but not always. Sometimes comp... Like, everything else is kind of peripheral to being brainy at the core normally. Um, So yeah, that's the short version. I like playing the brain. I like playing (laughs) scholars. I like playing, you know, canny rogues. I like playing a fighter who you know, analyzes his opponent. Like, I just like the, the the edge of intellect that you can add to almost any character in a role-playing game. Hmm. Alapon says, well, last, last question. If David could run you each a game, what would you want him to and why? Also, do you think he would do it? I want David to run a Ryutama game for everyone. I want it to happen. I want to cry and uh, also I, have a delightful time. I don't know time. if I can handle I, much It'll cute. be so much cuteness. I can't, it's just going to be Busby all the it's, time. That's, that's the one that's what I want. Show me the book. Yes, yes. yes. It's oh super my God, yes. The Zaki Oregon Trail one. And do you so think you would do it? Uh, yes, I think David would do it in a heartbeat. And tell him? Mostly because I would cry. Now I really want it to happen. David. David. No, I don't think David... Well, is that question, like, do you think David could, like, does David no, have the time would, to run it? would do it. If David had the time, I think David would run, like, all the games. Felix? You got one? Me? Uh... I don't know. Because, like, David's really good at doing whatever the fuck he can with, like, with whatever he's given. And I like seeing, like, every time I, I play in a game that he runs, every time I'm always like, yes! Yes! Um, but I... Considering that... Uh, I don't armies is his favorite, and I really do enjoy when he play, when he runs them. I would play every single unknown army game. That I would love to play unknown armies. I would love to play unknown armies. Let's do it. That would be cool. Um, Tevin, where I can go. I think I know what. Because I have my answer ready. I think I know. Okay, so Dave is very visceral in his in the way he describes things, mm-hmm. and. But he's also very knowledgeable about what he does. I would love it if he played like some kind of like 40, 40k thing because it would be very Ooh. like it would hurt and it would, it would feel <laughs> like you're there. Rogue trader is what that, I would want. That, that would that would be oh, the man. probably Dark Heresy seconds. Out. Dark Heresy seconds. Out. Mine's yeah. paranoia. Paranoia. Oh my, oh my god. god, that would be so good. I would good. love to see David spin on paranoia. Can we oh, play that, that on stream? That's a one shot. Yeah, we can do a one shot of paranoia. We can do a one shot of paranoia. So, I'm so down for that. Um, do, do we all have to wear the same uniform? For yes. That? Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, we need jumpsuits. I'll, I'll make, right, I next, have next question. Next question. OP Blaziken asks uh, What was the most fun time you've had playing D&D? Oh. Um, uh, man. Playing D&D, that's a, rough, that's a rough question. I mean,. D and D isn't. I've played a lot of D and yeah. D. Playing or playing or G, the like. The I'm, gonna G, say, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna say GM counts. Okay. If you got one, take it. Um, I gotta think. So, I have a story, a good one. So yeah. like, I set up this campaign where they were very high level, and like, the whole the whole premise and theme of the campaign was that essentially dragons would pick people to be these champions of the world, and the the golden dragon would pick people, and then a a, 
a Draco Lich would come in at near the end of those characters like era and would come in and like give them power or corrupt them and show that, that and show the golden dragon that he was wrong <coughs> in thinking that humanity could handle this kind of power. So the PCs were the same heroes who were going on this path and everything they had to deal with was the fall of the other heroes before them and who were also played by PCs. Um, That's fucking sweet. And then what happened was Devin runs some tight games. One of the last, the, the, it was the last session, and basically I unveiled that one of the PCs had essentially started a mass war with the dwarves at the last Oops. second, causing the deaths of like millions of people, which caused the players to start crying as they awesome. realized that that yeah, they just started the cycle over again. And that nothing had changed. Everything was still the same. And the world was still fucked up. That's no. dark souls. The shit out of <laughs> That's <laughs> fucking awesome. sick. So uh, the question was supposed to be funniest, by the way. I misread it. Oh, oh okay. But that was an awesome story. <laughs> uh, mine is the same answer, actually. <coughs> so my brother, uh, hey, hey, Jonathan, what's up? Uh, he's not watching this. It doesn't fucking matter. This, this is your hair. Um, my brother um, used to run a D&D game back when he was like 17. So I was like 19. Um, and I was, I was home for a uh, summer break or something like that. Uh, I don't remember why I was home, but he was running it for his friends and he wanted me to be like the, like, like the NPC that turned out to be a PC sort of thing. Cause I wanted to play. I was jumping into the game over the summer and, uh, I had rolled up like I was a pirate. Uh, like I was a special class as a pirate. It was, it was like three, five all out the ass. Um, and I, I was sitting and I was going to join after they found me in the next town and I was going to be like, ha I have a PC sheet. It was going to be fun. Anyway, I never got to play that game, but it was okay because I watched four 17 year old boys try to figure out the, the trapped trail on the way to said town. My brother had not laid a single trap. It was not. Oh man. Or if he, if the I classic. Cannot, I cannot actually mm. remember if he had laid laid any traps but they were very simple ones but I remember them standing on the side of a rope stretched across the trail for literally in real life time two hours discussing what to do oh my goodness it was amazing I had to excuse myself like five times no it was amazing because they were all delightfully incompetent at it like in the way that only you know 17 year olds can be it was so good. It was so good. It was amazing. The other uh, funniest thing at D and D um, would would be in John's campaign recently, oh my God. Um, where my warlock caroused herself into having an affair with the husband of the Harpers. Um, <laughs> the husband of the head of the Harpers. The husband of the head of the Harpers. Nice. It was so good. Felix, me. Ah, uh, shit. You don't have to go. I have one ready. Well, uh, all right. I'm gonna go. So I was playing D and D three point five. And I was playing a rogue swashbuckler fighter duelist. That's so and uh, we had split off from the main campaign at our, at our college because the main campaign had like 20 players in it. Mm-hmm. And the DM, uh, the, the breaking point was when the DM uh, forced a lawful good mind flare into our party. Oh, wow. And we were like, some of our characters were just like, we're not cool with that. That's a fucking mind flare. Mm-hmm. And, and the GM was basically just like, you, you have to do it. You just have to bring this guy along. So we kind of broke off. We took our, our very high-level characters. We were, like, level 17 or 18 or so. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just me and my buddy. Uh, I was playing Perry Brasscoffle, the duelist. And my buddy was playing Thunar Olafsson, the dwarf. Nice. <laughs> um, That's a sitcom right uh, there if I've ever heard one. It was just the two of us, man. It was just it was Perry and Thunar. Thunar and Perry. 100 years. www.perryandthunar.com. Um, <laughs> so we were stopping this epic-level wizard who's casting this ritual that is going to sacrifice an entire fucking mountain village full of people Jesus. Uh, to basically let him ascend. Um, and my character had ridiculous bluff. Uh, mm-hmm. And between the 3.5, I had, like, magic items and feats and skills. I had, like, a plus 54 to my bluff. It was a ridiculous number, right? I forgot how um, big those numbers got. They don't get that big normally, but D&D breaks down to high levels. So I strolled into the room where he's doing the ritual, and I walked up to him. I, he's, he's like walking three circles around the outside of a pentagram, and then like trailing fucking fresh blood along the fucking lines. Just and I stop him, like, "Hey, evil. man, you're doing that backwards." And he looks over at me. He's like, "What?" And I'm like, "Yeah, you're doing it backwards. If you do it like that, it's not going to work. Just." Go the other way around. I'm doing you a favor here. Oh my god. Ch- 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 oh, natural that's 20. That's so good. <laughs> oh my goodness. At 74 bluff. And and my DM, Mike, who I hope is watching right now, just goes like... 
<laughs> oh, there's nothing. <laughs> All right, he starts walking the other way. <laughs> and so I, I literally just like sat there, and like he finished walking all the way around, and he's like, "And now I shall become a god." God! <laughs> god! <laughs> That's good. That's and like good. he looks at me, and he's like. You motherfucker. <laughs> and I was like, sorry, man. Uh, and then we realized he spent his epic level spell slots attempting to cast that spell, but he oh. flunked it because he listened to me. So then I stabbed him until he died. <laughs> That's solid. Oh, the end. That's solid. God, your memory is impeccable. I can't yeah, remember I shit. Yeah, do it, dude. Do it, yeah. do it. Yeah. Okay, get, get so it my favorite would do it or do a D&D was I was running a game for some people and... David's character was trying to rig this contest, and uh, it, was, it was just like a gladiatorial thing. And uh, he made some <laughs> deals with some criminal types so that some of the people would get in there were were pretty rough sorts and uh, use poisons on their daggers and stuff. And one of them walks in and they grab their daggers and everybody's ready to go. And then he hears the name of his sister get called. Oh, <laughs> and oh, she has fuck. to fight this guy. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Whoops. The funniest part was just the look on, on his face when that whole deal happened. Turns out she, you know, was his sister in one because, you know, she's badass. Yeah, she's badass. And, uh, and it all worked out, but that was that was probably my favorite thing. Then saying your name and then, my, and then I ended game right when I did it. So everybody just had their mouths open. <laughs> just the whole game. Shay also runs awesome games. <laughs> so, yeah. So I guess that's just how funny is. So funniest was... Uh, I was in this game and I was playing this fucking berserker in 4 I mean, berserkers are crazy fucking strong. But we got in a situation where there was this crazy ass elven queen who essentially had us by the balls and we couldn't do anything. And we were just like, well, we're sitting at dinner and she's just telling us how she's going to fuck us. And we're just like, we can't do anything. If we do anything, she'll kill like a bunch of people. And I was like, man, fuck it. So I, I, was, <laughs> like, eating, I was eating, eating, eating. I was like, you know what? Fuck this. So I, I put my hands on the table, jump up onto the table. I'm like, roll initiative. And I roll initiative and I beat the, I beat her. Run across because she's got this magic fucking orb that she's like, if you do anything, I press the button and people die. So I run across the fucking table and fucking soccer kick the orb. Got him. <laughs> yeah, got him. <laughs> Boom. And I hope you whoop her ass. Yep. And we whooped it. Like, I, I kicked it. It flew out a window and I was like, and now I'm going to whoop the shit out of you. I really <laughs> wish that you had like super failed that so that when you kicked it it actually detonated it like it kicked it and then like struck it against the wall and like hit whatever little button and just like everybody was oh like, it got worse because like <laughs> I kicked it so hard that it flew out the window and broke so like after I got done beating her up the big monster that she was going to send just teleported straight into the room and we were like huh guess we're going to whoop your ass yeah. <laughs> <laughs> alright I guess we have uh, one more question or are we uh, okay. we don't have any more questions okay then that's cool so, that was really good. Yeah, thank you guys I very much. I didn't get much. to tell my story about the time that we jumped an epic level wizard in the back room of a bar and killed him with an anti-magic field. Yeah, save that for, for next And unarmed attacks. That, uh, that sounds awesome it's as fuck. Pretty good stuff. The only, yeah. the only story I ever remember is my is my mage character going out in the cocaine fuel. That, <laughs> that's, that's definitely one we keep in the pocket for next time. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you guys us. very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Awkward. See you, see you next week. Now we have our own way. We keep waving while Dylan turns it off. And it was really were. great. Brought a game for you guys. We're gonna you have to make a lot of little silly jingles for all this. Oh, we need God. some songs. I'm gonna get on that for next week. Make songs. All right, songs and. Oh.